I don't know about you, but it's amazing to me how quickly that gratitude and thankfulness can be sucked out of our hearts with the uh, everyday mundane aspects of life and the rhythms distracting us and getting in the way, right? Do, do you sense that? Do you feel that in, in a season like this where it's, it's a time of gratitude and yet it seems like if your family is anything like ours, we celebrate Thanksgiving and, and at least uh, where we symbolically pause to remember and be grateful for the grace that we've received and the blessings that we have. But almost immediately after we pray and eat the turkey, uh, Black Friday and Cyber Monday swoop in and distract us with all the things we think we need and don't have. And the thankfulness, maybe even for you, on Thanksgiving Day, you started pulling out your phone and thumbing through, what are the deals? And the th- how quickly our gratitude can be sucked out of our hearts to find contentment or desires in other things. That's why we have to fight to maintain gratitude throughout this season. It really launches with kind of the Thanksgiving season and then in through Christmas because everything in life. The curated ads, the request from our kids, uh, our desire to be generous, the demands of our in-laws, the pressure to keep up with other parents, it's all coming after our heart. They all seek to overshadow the wonder of what we truly have in the gift of Jesus Christ. The desire to be generous, it's great. It's a godly desire to be generous with our time and our resources, but we must not equate trinkets with virtue, or or, or consumerism with contentment. One day of toys is not going to create a culture for your family, but a season of gratitude might. And, And extending and fighting for gratitude in your home and through every day throughout this season, that could create a different culture for your family in your home. Not just the countdown till one day of presence, But what if it was every day a countdown of gratitude for what God has provided and given to us? We need to fight in this season to remain thankful and grateful. It's it's why the author of 1 Thessalonians, that's right, 1 Thessalonians, it was a church in Thessalonica. That's not helping, is it? The Apostle Paul, uh, who we've been studying over the past several weeks, He wrote a bunch of letters uh, to the churches that he planted throughout uh, the region and Greece. And so you got Colossae and Philippi and and Thessalonica and Galatia and all of these areas. He went and planted churches and then he wrote them letters to encourage and direct and give them insight into uh, living their lives for Jesus Christ. And so in the series we just finished up, we were looking at that letter to the church in Philippi. Well, he wrote another letter to this church, and in 1 Thessalonians, we read in chapter 5, verse 16, he says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And I love how he starts with this, rejoice always. It's what we've been doing today. It's what we've started our service with, and and it's how we're going to end our service as we rejoice, as we rejoice in baptisms and lives being changed, as we rejoice in who God is, as we worship and celebrate. I love that second song that we just finished singing. I'll praise you anywhere. On the mountains, in the valleys, no, no matter what happens, no matter what I'm going through, I'll praise you anywhere. It reminds me of the psalm, the psalmist's words in Psalm 34. He says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. That we rejoice always that we praise the name of God. That we praise Jesus throughout our day and throughout our life. I will bless the Lord at all times. Rejoice always. Then he says, pray without ceasing. And what this doesn't mean, I think so many of us think that prayer is Oh, I've got to sit in a quiet room and fold my hands and close my eyes and pray. And that is prayer. You can do that. But did you know what he's talking about here is the, a posture and a heart posture of prayer throughout your day. That even while you're driving, don't close your eyes, but you can pray. 
that no matter where you are, if you're at work, you can pray as you're walking through the day with your kids or driving them to their sporting events or that you can pray, that you can hold a posture in your heart and in your mind of, God, thank you. God, I, Jesus, I need you today. Strength for this moment. God, I thank you for how you have answered, how you've seen, how you've provided, God, and a posture of pray without ceasing. Rejoice, worship, pray. Here's a way you can pray and, and hold this posture. Verse 18, give thanks in all circumstance. Here's why this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Here's why it matters for us. Because these spiritual practices of spending time in God's word to know who he is, of worshiping and prayer, it helps us develop gratitude in our hearts and in our minds. When I pray, when I worship, when I read God's word, when I study and, and rest in who he is, it develops a heart of gratitude. And to be clear, this verse, it doesn't say, give thanks for all circumstances. That when you get that report from the doctor and, and it's cancer or, or it's just, it's not good, and, well, thanks God for cancer. No, no, it's, he's not saying that. What he's saying is that in the midst of whatever you're going through, not give thanks for all things or circumstances, but in all circumstances, give thanks. Because God is in control because he sees you in the midst of those moments and he's still at work even when life is hard. These spiritual practices of worship and prayer, of studying God's word, See, they matter because they pull my heart and my actions and my mind away from myself and back onto who Jesus is and what he's capable of, to the character of God and his love and his grace to see him more clearly. And when I get a greater perspective and picture and understanding of who my God is, gratitude becomes the response of my heart through worship and prayer. When I see what he's like, my gratitude increases, and Paul understands this, which is why in so many of his letters that he writes to the churches he plants, he tells them to be grateful. In fact, you can read through Colossians this week, just a handful of chapters, and in every single chapter, he, he calls the church to be thankful and to give thanks. If you're anything like me, the majority of us, if we're honest, we live at such an intense pace in life that we leave little to no margin between the moments of our lives. We go from one thing to the next. No wonder our gratitude is sucked out of our hearts. We don't give time to be grateful. We don't give time to reflect or remember. It ends up being the accidents and the sickness, the setbacks in life, or the strain that seems to be what shakes us awake from our frantic pace of life. We end up losing the rhythm of grace and gratitude. We lose the ability to appreciate. We lose our ability to savor and reflect and linger and enjoy life because we think that God's only going to show up in the miraculous moments. We want to see God move. We want to see his miracles, but we think he only does that in spontaneous, miraculous ways. And what we miss is that so often God works in the ordinary, everyday moments of our lives. That it's in the simple things. And because it's in the ordinary, simple things in our lives, we miss it because we live at a frantic pace to be able to recognize it. We miss the extraordinary in the midst of the ordinary. Things like, because there was no room in the inn, the Son of God was born in a stable and no one rec recognized that Jesus, that God in human form, was working in a neighborhood doing construction work for 30 years as a carpenter. It seemed too ordinary. It seemed impossible to believe that God could be found in the everyday. We must learn how to slow down, however. Slow the pace enough to see God enough to choose to be thankful for what he's doing. And my prayer today for us is that very thing, that we would slow down, 
Some of you, even on your way in today, you were frustrated because you got stuck behind somebody that forgot how to drive in the snow, and they were going too slow, and you're like, I'm going to be late for church, and i got to get there, and, and we live at this frantic pace, right? So today, what if we just take a breath and reflect and give the space to remember who our God really is? Now, if you come to church and you think, look, if I don't write anything down, I don't think it counts. If I don't take notes, I'm not sure that, that, that it counts as church. And while that's not true, if, you, if that's you and you just feel like you have to write something down, you can write this down. 1 Thessalonians 5.16, write that down. Here's the other thing. A great attitude comes out of great gratitude. And if you're struggling with the attitude in your life in this season or in the circumstances that you're walking through, your attitude shifts and is formed when you increase your gratitude for who God is and what he's doing in and through your life. And what he tells us is to rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and give thanks in all circumstances. These are the opportunities, these are the moments to see the grace of God in my life. To recognize it, to slow down long enough to it's the ping off of the bat at your kid's baseball game. It's the ball flying into the back of the net when they score a goal. This is the grace of God. He's in the everyday moments, the ordinary things. It's the laughter of your wife and kids in the other room. It's your favorite song from college that comes on the radio as you pull into your driveway while the sun is setting. It's a cup of coffee on a brisk morning around the campfire. These are the moments of God's grace where he whispers through creation and through the ordinary moments of life, I'm here. I'm working. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In, that, in every circumstance, give thanks. Our lives are drenched in God's grace. But if you're anything like me, you live at too frantic of a pace sometimes to remember. Slow down enough to see it and be thankful. thankful for God's grace to see how much I actually have. To be thankful for God's grace to resist what I don't really need. His grace to love and serve. Gratitude for His grace to slow down and reflect. Gratefulness for His grace to give our lives away serve and care for others. Thankfulness for God's grace in the gift of his son Jesus who provides access for us to come before the throne of an almighty, holy and all-powerful God. What more is there other than to say 